Hey guys, Mike here. So in this video, I'm going to show you how we do a DIY concrete shed slab. Now, for you experienced concrete guys, you know, this isn't, you're probably not going to pick up too many tips and tricks here, but what you will see is, you'll see us training some new employees on this, so um, that might be a little interesting for you. And for you DIYers, I mean, this is the video definitely for you if you want to watch and see how to pour a, a small concrete slab for a shed. That's what this is for. This is an 8x12 concrete slab that the owners are going to buy one of those pre-made sheds and set it on top. And then, you know, the shed people usually fasten it down with some Tapcon screws or something. But So for you DIYers, this is going to be a great video. Now, so what we're doing is we, we got it formed up and we got the wire mesh in it for reinforcement. We're using a 3000 PSI concrete mix. And for you guys, you know, if you want to know how to how to form up a slab like this and get it perfectly level and square, you can check out my concrete slab course down below in the description. That'll that'll teach you everything you need to know about doing a slab like this. But this will give you a pretty good idea how to how to pour it and how to finish it right here. Now we this takes just over a little over a, a yard of concrete for this at four inches thick, and you know for us we were we're actually pouring another slab on this site a big patio so obviously we just ordered the concrete out of a, a ready mix truck now if you're going to do this by mixing it by hand with bags i mean that's going to be quite a few bags probably talking like 60 or 80 bags of cement to mix up for this so if you're going to order your concrete if you're going to just order like a yard and a half of concrete or two yards you know you're going to you're going to pay Quite a bit for it plus you're going to pay for a small load charge depending on where you are but the good thing about it is it's fast and it's a lot easier than mixing it by hand so you just got to weigh the two options from mixing it by hand from bags or buying it from a concrete company like this so like i said we're using a 3000 psi concrete and you know we pretty much get most of it poured out first try trying not to get it make sure it's not too high so we don't have to rake too much out over the edge and then we get our edges mag floated. You can see Luke was mag floating the edges to get the edges nice and smooth. And that's what I'm doing over there on the right. And we're matching the top of the form. And then we got Tia and Sydney. Sydney's a brand new employee um, that we're going to start teaching how to screed. So one of the easiest way to learn how to screed is right off the top of the form. So we're going to teach them, you know, hey, you got to put the screed down on, making sure it's touching the form. We like it on keep the screed on the back edge just a little bit on the back edge we don't like it perfectly flat so it's digging in that's what Luke and Darren are showing them right now just back edge pull it about six to eight inches and pick it up set it back and just keep going back and forth like that and they'll rake the concrete to where it needs to be raked so that's what T and Sydney are doing right now so they and this is how we level most our concrete guys. This is how we teach people how to screed. You know, the first thing is teaching them the motion. And then the second thing is doing it when you're actually in the concrete, walking in the concrete. So what, what we didn't do on this slab was we didn't pound all our metal pins down level with the boards. Because <laughs> the dirt was really, really compacted hard here. and We, did, we just really didn't need to, to be honest with you. So we... we pounded the pins in until they were good and firm and then we screwed our forms to grade using that so they're having to set over the pins which isn't that big a deal you can see how I what I did to, to get rid of that high I just dig it out and move it in on the other side of the straight edge then I mag float that little section smooth but that's basically basically how you screed the slab when you have the form set to grade you know if you got two people it's pretty easy just to drag the concrete level with the top of the forms. Like I said, if you guys have new employees, I mean, this is the time to start training them. And that's what we're doing with Sydney right now is we're training her on the bull float. Now she did use it the day before on another job. So she's got a pretty good idea of how it works and what it does and why we use it. But once you get it screeded, then you're gonna wanna get it bull floated like this in the bull float We'll push down the rocks, bring up the cream and the paste, and give you a smooth surface. So when you get ready to put some type of finish on it, it just makes the finishing process go a little easier. 
So Sydney's going to finish getting this bolt loaded. And, you know, we'll get the rest of the tools all washed up. But that's the process right there to pour, get it screeded level. And what T is doing is, you know, once you stop and start the bull float, it usually leaves a little bit of a mark, you know, whether it's a divot or right when you pick it up like that, you see that mark it leaves. And we usually have somebody mag float that out nice and smooth. Because if you don't, if you leave that out in the sun like that and just wait till it gets firm, that gets harder and harder to mag out. So best to do it right when you get done bow floating if you have the time. So she's working on getting, you know, all those rock holes and stuff smoothed out. Not quite sure how many times she needs to go over it. And that's why I'm standing right there with her and kind of telling her, hey, you know, go over it as many times as you need to to get it smooth. Whatever it takes. And then on a slab like this where you can get around all the sides, you know, she could bow float it this way. And if she needed to, she could turn from a different angle and go the other way. So if she's going, let's say, east to west right now, once she gets it both flow this way, she could turn and go north to south. And that would help fill in anything else she couldn't get by going this way. So we poured this, as you saw the slump, the slump is how, how dry or how wet the concrete is. We probably poured this around a five or a six inch slump. That's a pretty normal slump for us. And we always put a water reducer in the concrete. So we don't really need to add much water to it when it gets on site. That water reducer chemical helps with the fluidity of the concrete, it makes it easier to work with. And that's pretty standard for us. We use that every day. It just helps reduce a little bit of the shrinkage cracking in the concrete and obviously helps make the pour go a little easier because the concrete's more fluid. Yeah, you see T is finishing up. So that's the pour. Now we're getting, we're getting to the finish. And what Luke's doing right now is he's putting an edge around it. So he's rounding that edge with an edger. And Darren's kind of just mag floating the surface. And he's using what we call a funny float. So he can reach out there and get the middle. You can see Luke also has a mag float in his hand, his left hand right now. So he can mag, you know, whatever he can reach from the edge if he needs to. And then Darren can use that funny float and get everything else. And what that does is it's just mag floating out the surface, getting any imperfections, filling in any leftover rock holes, getting a nice a nice uh, paste there to, to put a finish on. We're going to put a broom finish on this. So if you guys that don't know me, if this is your first video watching, my name's Mike Day. I own Day's Concrete Floors. I also own this channel, Everything About Concrete. And I specialize in all types of concrete flat work, slabs, floors, pool decks, patios, stamp concrete, uh, you name it. If it's flat, we do it. We do a lot of repair, a lot of epoxy floors. So if you like that kind of stuff, you know, go ahead down there and smash that like button. Let's see if we can get a thousand likes on this video. And if you haven't subscribed yet, you know, go ahead down there and subscribe. I come out with a couple videos a week about all different types of concrete flat work stuff. And then share too. Share with anybody on your social media who you think might find this useful or who might like this video. I'd appreciate it. So Luke's helping train Sydney there with how to do the edge with the edger. Again, this is her first week. So what we try to do with a new employee is train them in as many things that are as simple as possible in the first week. Just to give them an idea. Give them more responsibility keep them busy so they're not just standing around watching but get them to do the the easier things first so that can take one thing away from us and we can focus on a little bit more skilled parts of the finishing process when we have to so now what T is going to do is she's going to drag that broom across and she has done this before but not much so she's still kind of learning the ins and outs of brooming concrete and I mean when that's the finish you got to be pretty f particular pretty fussy about it any little wiggling with the broom at all will show up in that finish so she's being really careful with that and we're gonna 
go back and look at that pass and see if there's anything we could do better with it. And, you know, when she first started, where she started the broom, what I'm showing her is, hey, you, you got to come right up just about to the very edge. But remember, you, the, you're going to put an edger on that so you can stay about an inch away from the board. You never want to start right on top of the board and then drag whatever little dry remnants are on top of the board over the surface of the concrete. And that's what she did there. So if you dry some uh, dried up concrete that's on top of that 2x4 onto the surface, it's going to leave some funny marks. So we always start, you know, about a half inch to an inch away from the board on the concrete and then always start brooming on the nice wet paste. So now she's going to do that and then like I said we're going to run the edger right back over it after and the edger our edger on this one is about two inches wide so it gives you a little bit of room to play when you stop and start we're using a two foot broom here because it's pretty light it's easy to handle we could have used a three footer or a four footer but good one to learn on is that two footer because it's really light and see how careful she's being pulling that back once you get used to it, you know, you can go a little bit faster. But that's a good finish for a shed slab. You know, it's not going to be slippery. And you're not going to worry about falling and slipping if it's wet. So a broom finish. You could leave it just mag floated like when Darren was using that funny float. That's a pretty smooth finish too. You could leave it just mag floated. Or you could take a hand trowel to it and you could steel trowel it if you wanted to. But... This is what they wanted on this one, just a light broom finish. So this is what we're going to give them. So for you DIYers out there, you know, like I said, if you want to learn how to get this thing formed up square level, um, my concrete slab course is below. You can check that out. Probably be well worth the money to get that course to make sure you know all my tips and tricks on how to do it right. And then uh, for you experienced guys, you know, take the time when you have something small like this to start training your new people and this is how they become finishers you know everybody was a laborer when they first started and we all had to learn how to finish somehow so on a slab like this this is a good place to learn well thanks for watching guys and we'll see you on the next video